you so very much. This is a TED talk, so I'm gonna talk just a little bit, all right? Uh, my name is Roy Future Man Wooten. Um, some very kind people asked me to come here to TED to talk TED stuff. TED, technology, well, I know a little bit about that. I play with Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. My name, yes. My nickname is Future Man, and uh, I make up instruments. I make up stuff, you know? Somebody said, well, you know, people don't make instruments anymore. You know, the piano, they made that way back then, the violin, trombone, trumpet. These instruments have been invented, but I never got the memo, so I'm making up stuff, you know? So Ted, for technology, I'm saying something brief about that. Technology for me is technique. You know, it's kind of spiritual. There's spiritual technologies. Tonight I'm focusing on entertainment, the entertainment part of TED. Uh, design comes by way of the compositions that you're gonna be hearing, comes from a piano that I developed. There's just not enough time to show it all today. But I'm gonna let you hear some of the results. When someone invents the piano, you have operas, you got orchestra, you got ballets, you got all kind of stuff leaping off of this instrument. So I created an instrument, because I didn't know any better, right? I created it, I didn't know any better. I'm using my fingers like drumsticks with Bela Fleck and the Flecktones, and I find that I just want all the notes. So, I invented a piano, and it's like from that piano, the stories just erupt off the piano. So that leads us to the black Mozart. I was writing, well, it was writing itself from this piano, and that's a whole nother story because my piano is very weird. Uh, I use pads, they're all different colors. I can also change the temperament and the tuning. This is technology and design side of TED, right? But at the end of the day, we're gonna end up with entertainment. I wanna show you the story, some of the story that is erupting from this piano. Uh, when I started writing it, I called it the Chicken Symphony. It was called, because it sounded like chickens. It sounded like, wow. I said, wow, there's conflict here coming off of this story. And I have to say it because I, I, I composed some stuff before that was more feminine. It was all a ballet. But this was more strife going on. And so I was saying, wow, this is like a chicken symphony. That's what, that was my nickname for it, right? And then, whoa, I said, whoa, it's like, OK, the chickens have bayonets. They're being pitted against each other. There's a war going in here. Whoa, there's swords going on. And then I ran into the Black Mozart. This cat, back in the 1700s, got a tricorn hat like mine, ruffles and shirts like mine. I'm like, who is this guy wearing my stuff? Wow. <laughs> what is this? You know what I mean? OK, well, he's the 1700s, right? But now check this out. Now this is a sense of wonder. Because here it is. Now we're getting into a sense of wonder now. because. Through this story of Joseph Boulogne de Saint George, he was called the Chevalier de Saint George, he was mixed race during the 1700s, during the time of Mozart, Amadeus, Haydn, Beethoven would come later, Bach, right? But because of his color, whoa, we have a doorway into the age of enlightenment that showed it was the struggle for enlightenment. Here's the wonder of it now. At the age and the height of reason that we all learned in school, we all learned in school is the height of the age of reason, Voltaire, Rousseau, right? But it's also the height of the world slave trade. Now, I need to say this. It's the height of the world slave trade at the same time as the age of reason and enlightenment. There's a paradox here, right? So there's wonder. We got to look at this. We got to look at this. Okay. so. The moral of the story, I'm going to say, is a lot of times out of the darkest times comes the greatest achievements of the soul. And with that backdrop, now we listen to Mozart, right? His music is not speaking of just the slave trade. That it's at its height, right? But his music is speaking to something that we enjoy today. A lot of these beautiful people from the symphony. We can, we can understand Mozart today. Well, here is St. George, who was a great influence on Mozart. It said Mozart preferred to live in Paris in poverty in order to have his compositions played by this great orchestra where he was the leader. Even though despite his race, he was able to achieve amazing heights. So this speaks us today. It's a, I'm saying now we listen to the story with wonder now because it's like, wow, the paradox, right? The harder you try to keep someone down, the more difficult the time, a lot of times, the more beauty of the soul that comes out. The artist digs down deep, right? That's the redemption of the story, right? So we're not stuck in the slave trade. What we're stuck in is the struggle for enlightenment. Because when you have slavery, you also, the women don't have rights. So you got, check it out. 
You have the abolitionist movement striking up. Now, these are words that you hear with Martin Luther King, abolitionist movement, the slave trade here in the Americas. But I never thought of that in terms of classical music. Whoa, OK, so now everything's starting to get exciting, right? I've watched some of the TEDs, right? The guys talk about how exciting classical music was. But let's look at the times. It's the height of the world slave trade. Listen to that for a minute. It's the height of the world slave trade. We got to listen to that with a bit of wonder. It's the height of the world slave trade. I'm setting up this music that we're gonna play, right? Because the music is so beautiful at the height of the world slave trade, right? At the height of the world slave trade, you have the beautiful compositions of Mozart, St. George. They're all influencing each other, right? The music is a herald for the future, right? It's not stuck where we are. The music is showing humanity where the human heart is going at the end of the day. It's like today. The government almost shut down, and they were like, whoa, you might get a chance to play some extra time, right? I said, well, wow, that's just like the Titanic. The musicians played on the way down. Perfect. <laughs> All right? So with that, with, with that, we're going to play a little bit. I want to let you hear this beautiful sound of this young man who rose from slavery to chivalry. And we're going to just show you a little bit of that with a sense of wonder. We're going to show you a little bit of that with a sense of wonder. All right? Is everybody all right? All right. I was trying not to talk too much. I'm going to talk with the language of music right now. I got too many beautiful people right here. All right? All right. First chord. Here we go. And. All right, now we're going to move just a little touch of St. George, but I'm writing something for St. George. This is called the famous St. George, all right? We're going to take a little journey down my memory lane from the future, all right? Check this out. Famous St. George.
All right, so I got a little bit more time, right? We're talking about the age of wonder, and my goal today was to lead with a sense of wonder. And right now, I feel like I'm dreaming a good dream. Um, I wanted to, to hear the harp, the beautiful harp, the timpani. But with the age of wonder, I want to leave you with this thought. The redeeming part in the age of enlightenment, the struggle of humanity to find itself. The age of enlightenment is the struggle for enlightenment. But in that struggle, in that struggle, it's like in the gym. When you struggle, it develops the soul. And that's the redemption part of the story. So this is a story that spans the globe. It's a universal story. I just did a story, uh, rescored an Oscar Micheaux film. And back during that time, was the, I call it the black and white days, where if you did black movies, it was called race films. If you did black music, it was called race music. Well, in a sense, from a futuristic, uh, being future man, I see this is like a race, a race film. But we're talking about the whole human race because the whole human race is struggling to find itself, right? And it comes all the way down to modern times. And this is the wonder of it all. When we say the time of Mozart and this great classical music, I like to think of the music is epic because it's challenging the unreasonableness of the times. The music is addressing the human heart. The music is addressing it. The artists are epic, right? And so. Out of the great depths of the time, the artists are addressing something that flies in the face of what's going on. And so, if we look all the way down into modern times, we look at Martin Luther King and the great uh, civil rights movements and the human rights movements going to present day. And in those times, what we see is that even in recent time, we cannot say that that was the height of the slave trade. We look at Martin Luther King, a lot of people who were risking their lives to make things better, sitting on buses, sitting together, so that human people can sit next to each other. It seems, it seems so self-evident, like they say in the Constitution, that we don't even have to mention it, that all people are created evil. It seems so self-evident, but look how much blood has been spilt to make it so self-evident. But here's what I'm saying. The wonder of it all is that even during Dr. King's time, in recent times, it was not the height of the slave trade. In fact, slavery was over. Okay, slavery was over. Now, anytime you think about classical music, take the pressure cooker of the 60s and magnify it to now slavery is not over. It's not, not, is it, not only is it not over, but it's at its height. Humanity is being challenged to find itself. The redeeming part of the story, I say a lot of times, is in the voice of the artist. And with that, I want to leave you with that thought. I want to thank Ted for inviting me to come here and share a sense of wonder and I want to thank all these beautiful musicians. And uh, I'd like to just say that, like my dad said, when the times get difficult, it is a positive signal to keep charging. All right, we're going to rock with Child of Slaves. What are we doing? Yeah, we're going to have a good time. Who did the photos? His 60th birthday today.